Okay. okay. Hi, I'm Carolyn Letvin, and I'm a new member to NEVA. And when I attended my first meeting, I think it was my first first Zoom meeting, um, the idea of the show and tell came up and Christina asked for someone to kind of take on the organization of it to schedule people for these meetings and um, to see what would happen. And, and of course we need a little graphic and that's right up my alley. So I had some time and I was the only one who raised my hand. So um, it was the only hand raised. And so that's why I'm here talking to you today. Um, I'm really glad that the idea of getting to know all of you um, is um, a really, to me, it's a really good idea. And I'm so glad to have this opportunity. So um, I think that's all I need to talk about because many of you were at that meeting. And I'm going to now introduce Rhoda um, Rosenberg. I don't know her. I know her name. But so I'm going to let her introduce herself and show her work to us so we can all get familiar with what she does and hopefully remember her name till the end of time. Rhoda, hit it. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks for asking me and giving me this opportunity. Um, I have a cameraman here right now. He's my son. So I'm going to do what's called a, um, a, a, a Zoom link uh, with a video. He's going to get it set up. I'm all set up on the table. Just give us like one second, okay? It'll be. And I think what's going to happen is that uh, various people will do various things. And Christina, I think, has some images from each of us. Oh, my in. Can you share? Um, can you share? Oh my goodness! Uh, I don't know if I have them. Is it while she's talking? I will get it together. Okay. Uh, the answer is yes, I do. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll be doing some screen sharing and stuff as yeah. necessary. So can you share a screen? Uh, you, Rhoda, you initiate your screen share, and when you want Christina to show something that she has that you sent her. You, okay. you ask her to screen share. Hi, son. Don't I need Rhoda. to actually make her, I need to make her a host to allow her to screen share, right? Exactly, exactly. You have to So do I it. just did that. You have to enable it. I did. So you're all set there. And um, it looked like I had um, some, okay, you need to actually, since I actually hit that before actually admitting Dennis, you need to admit Dennis. There you go. We're there. Can you find um, Dennis there, though? We're getting there. OK. I should have admitted him before I switched over. Sorry. So this is the, uh, this is the first time. So we are doing this, as you know. So there may be glitches, and we appreciate your patience. Um, <laughs> you sound a little bit like a um, flight attendant just then. That was pretty cool. Yes. <laughs> and there are two exits in the there front and in the back. Exits. Okay. You want to get out of here. Uh, wow, this is like being on a ride at the fair. My brilliant cameraman, I have no idea what I'm doing or how it looks. So you are oh, Rhoda, nice. The length of this cable. I'm going to move this. Okay. All right. So, um, what I'm going to do is I pulled out a lot of books and I'm going to go through them quickly. Um, what I thought I would do is first show you the first book I made, which I didn't know a thing about making books, but I had all these uh, prints that I had made and um, these etchings and they were proofs. So I decided to put them together um, in a book and I fell in love. I love the poems of T.S. Eliot. I had no idea what book for it is. I didn't know how to bind anything. I found this kind of wire cable. I put things together. I, I Hold up the binding and hold it still again. We couldn't see it. Okay. I would have, I'm trying to. Um, can I move this again? Yeah, that's, that's it. That's better, yeah. Okay, anything you want me to stop or explain more or go you know, back or anything, just you know, tell me what to do. 
But I, I, what I did was I just took the pages because these were printed on uh, printmaking paper and I then glued them together with some Asian paper. I took some um, tiny Okay, now Rhoda, we can't hear you. All we hear is running water. Oh. Can everyone can everyone in the meeting mute themselves, please? I think that's a very good idea. And David, are you able to pull back just a little bit? Is your son's name David? Did I hear that? That's better. Okay, we're, this is the first time for us too, so we're all working together to get to figure out how to do this. Exactly. But I appreciate your telling me what works better. So what I did on this book, since I knew nothing, literally nothing about how to make a book, I glued the pages together with some Japanese uh, paper. I then wrote the poem, the whole poem on the book as parts of the poem here. I used gel medium, I used acrylic paint, I used shellac. Um, it's probably archivally a disaster. And metal leaf. And, and what? Metal leaf. You mean this piece here? Yeah, the gold, the shiny. These are called, um, they're called, mm -hmm. I want to, okay. No, I'm okay. And I just- And the fridge is seltzer. I glue them onto the other side of the page, the paper, and I then put, I wrap this around with this kind of, it's not an electrical tape, but some other kind of tape, <laughs> and I'll just quickly go through the pages, but I was really, I've always loved T.S. Eliot's poems. This was um, what was this one? This one was um, Ash Wednesday. I did one also for the Wasteland. Um, but again, these were just etchings that I was working on, and they were proofs. So that's what got me into making books was printmaking, because I'm a printmaker that has probably enough proof to make a lot of books out of. So uh, what I did was I wrapped each page around, and then I had this this wrapping here and then I just stitched it like this and held it together. Um, put it on the cover. I rubbed um, graphite on because it was Ash Wednesday. I spelled Elliot wrong. It only has one L. <laughs> and uh, I, I signed it here. So this was the very first book I did in 1991. Um, and it got me, it really got me hooked. Um, I also did, um, I also began working on journals. Give me your tripod. Here? Oh, no, this. This? David, are you able to get rid of the, um, like the menu things that are surrounding the picture? Wow, look at those dirty hands. <laughs> How beautiful. That's a great picture right there. Um, if not, that's okay. I'm not sure how to do it because it's- That's awful. okay. All right, just keep going. Should I begin again? Listen, hold on. I'm nicer when you can move the camera back. Yeah. Um, cannot do it. There you go. That's all right. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, at this time also, when when my, my son was a little boy, <laughs> which this book is very old too, I began to um, think about what could be in a book. And I had a table upstairs in an attic where we were living. And every day I would take scraps of paper that were on the table and I would just glue things in this book that I did not make, but I bought. And this began a journey of what we began to be called visual journals. 
Um, and it just, it wasn't a book that, you know, had any content to it, but I called myself a 15 minute a day artist because I had a new baby and I couldn't really get out and print or do a lot of other things. But I, every day I could go upstairs and just put something in this book. So it has, again, just, you know, whoops, whoops, every, and any material I had, I didn't go out and buy materials for this book. It had receipts, everything. One of my favorite pages in this book is, um, one day I just didn't know what to do. So I'm looking for it. Even a scribble, anything I could do, any mark I could make, it made no difference. It was about non, um, non-censoring myself and being, um, and, and, uh, and, and just, Again, taking anything that I could find on, and again, everything was on the table or on the floor, or I cut up things. I'm looking for this one page. Um, one day, oh, here it is. One day, I really didn't know what to do, and all I could do is I said, well, I'm going to draw a line right across this page, and I like the way this little, I said, well, I've got to do something, so I wrote the word something. <laughs> So this was my 15 minute a day um, book, artist book that I made. Um, and then I, uh, this is another journal I made. I took a book that um, again was mailed to me as a, as a, like a, um, an, an appointment book. And it was an appointment book about health and, and beauty. And I thought that was ridiculous. <laughs> So I had made a series of prints and, um, and I, I had them all done in slides and I sent all these slides out and I kept getting rejection notices, one right after the other. So I call this my rejection journal. And um, I use the here, this little photograph that I took, my mother used to say to me, stand up straight, don't slump over. And here you can see different, um, I, I would get back different um, applications. Um, does that say rejected? I actually did get accepted into a few things, but then eventually, um, oh, I got accepted there. Um, so every so this was like a spread, and it was every week, and I worked on this every week for one year. Um, and instead of working on a page, I worked on a spread, and this was another. And I did any material I wanted. I found um, photographs. I used carborundum, gel medium, shellac. Um, and again, it was not like something that I consider to be high art, but I guess I'm in love with low art. And at the end, I had all these pages about how to be healthy and what to, what to eat and so forth and so on. And I decided, well, I got to get rid of that. So I I canceled it all out and I call it, you know, um, censorship through um, uh, art through censorship. And then I realized there were words and I could, I almost decided I might make a book out of the words that were left over, but I didn't do it. So that was a journal book too. Um, eventually I began to make books that had more substance for me. And one of the books that I put together, I, I, I got very interested in the relationship between mothers and daughters and what we expected our mothers to look like, what we expected them to behave like. Um, I, I remember at a certain particular age, I was very critical of my mother. I wanted her to look a certain way. I wanted her to dress a certain way. Um, I wanted her to, you know, very much, you know, be a certain kind of image that I was interested um, in, in her being. And this was a book that I put together and I called it Old Maid because um, there's a little, I'm trying to look for it, oh, it's right here. Um, these were, I found this book that had these um, 
these cutout things of women, how they dressed in the 50s. And, you know, I wanted my mother to wear fancy dresses like that. And my mother was a working woman. She, she, she was a hardworking woman and she did wear those kind of dresses except when she went out. And I remember the stockings she wore and the bobby pins that she had. Um, but also it reflected kind of what I was about too. Um, so here it said old maid and here one picture it says um, artist and the other was a dancer. Because when I was that age, if you weren't married by the time you were 21, um, or engaged at least, um, you were going to be an old maid. And I didn't want to get married at 21. <laughs> I wanted to be an artist. So it was the other thing I liked doing a lot and thought I might not be, but I enjoyed was dancing. So these were little cards that I found. And what I did was I took a lot of prints, again, using prints that, um, using prints has always been a part of my books. I. I can't say I never, but I rarely approach making an artist's book um, that I don't use prints. So these, all of these are prints. Prints that I pasted over, pasted things next to one another. And this is the way young girls were supposed to look. They always had to be proper and their hair combed. And I don't know, I kind of had a hard time falling into this. And I was very fascinated with legs, um, stockings, legs, dresses. So this book has both sides and it was, and I used, I used the pages of the prints that I had on Gray Reeves paper and I hinged them together very, you know, very easily with pieces of um, Japanese paper that I wanted to kind of emulate the, um, the way the, um, the dresses, you know, the cutout doll dresses were like these tabs here, I wanted it to be, but I didn't make them white. So this was a, a book um, that was about a relationship again with mother and the times we were living in and just a generation of how women had to look, had to behave and what was expected of them. So that was a book, that was a book. Okay, and in that sense, I then continue to make later on another book that was using my mother and my grandmother as an important as an important uh, subject matter. Um, my grandmother was a, an incredibly important person in my life. My mother wrote a biography of her, an autobiography of her family. And um, these were pages that I had printed on many times. And I decided I would go back into this book, into these, into these prints rather. Again, always going back into the prints that I have made and using my mother's, part of my mother's text, her words from um, the book that, uh, the, 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 the autobiography that she had written. So all the words here, um, were from this biography. And I went back in and, and I took these pages that again were on Reeves Gray and I printed over them numerous times until I got what I wanted. Um, so many of these, and I, hand, I just got these stamps from some uh, store, I forget where, and I hand printed all of the text on them. My grandmother, I, she always carried a pocketbook. So the image of a pocketbook was really important. And also my grandmother had made me a pin cushion and she, she, she made the begin like she sewed a little lace around it. So it was kind of like a little doily. So that's why this image as well as the pocketbook come in to this book. Um, this was text that I found in, um, in some book, I began reading a lot of women's writings and a lot of women's poetry. So again, the doily, my grandmother was born in Kiev. Again, the doily, the 
pocketbook. Some of these were prints that I had made. Most of them were prints I had made earlier. And I printed the backs of each page um, because I wanted it to, I wanted a spread versus to just look at one page. This was kind of like the little doily pin cushion that she had given me, made for me, which I still have. I'm thinking very seriously of um, really making a book out of the entire autobiography that she has written, but I get to do it. I have a lot of unfinished projects. My mother, I think my mother saw this and she once asked me, my goodness, Rhoda, why is your work so dark? Why do you use so much black? And I said, I like black. And she says, are you depressed? And I said, no, mom, I'm not depressed. I just love black. And then she said to me, I think you came out of my womb wearing a black turtleneck. I wonder if they're asking questions. Since they're all on mute. Are you guys? We're still here. We're enthralled. Okay, okay just gotcha. Just, if, right. anyone, if anyone has a question, you can unmute and ask it, certainly. Um, I just wanted to say, I think Rhoda and I have had parallel lives. Um, <laughs> these are amazing. I have had parallel lives with mothers. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous book. Well, thank you. Um, it's a very important book. Um, I was asked by the women, you know, in uh, the women, the book um, curator of Washington, D.C., um, if I would sell this book. And um, she offered me very little money for it. And I thought to myself, you know, I think I'd rather have this book and, and be able to look at it and share it than have it sit in um, a museum in a, you know, in a vault. And it wasn't a lot of money, so I, I passed it up. Here we are. Okay, um, the next book I'm gonna show you is a book of, um, this is a process book. It has no personal content, but I love to, I love to draw. I really love to draw. I love, I love marks. So this is a book about additive lines. And I took a Lexan plate and with a tool, I just scratched these lines. And then on the back, I scratched more lines and printed it on the back of the paper so that the, the very, so that the other side, the lines somewhat come through. And I kept adding more lines and adding more lines to the plate. So eventually we get more lines on the page on the page. How are we doing for time? I don't want to be a hog. Well, you should think about maybe showing us one more after this. All right. Well, I, I, you can take a lot of time because I'm only showing one. Um, I didn't realize that we were putting uh, as much of a, 
overview of our work in. So I'm just showing you the current work that I've, I've, I'm doing. So go ahead. I'm enjoying this. I am too. So eventually it went from, it went from this page to this page. And um, I like doing it. It was, it was, um, all right, I'm going to speed it up then. All right, I'll show you two books um, that are recent books. Uh, several years ago, I went to uh, Poland. And when I went to Poland the second time, I went to um, Berlin. And in Berlin, there is um, a memorial um, for, the, for the Jews. And I took a lot of photographs. And this was a book that I made um, from those photographs. There's no printing in this. This is all drawing with um, oil bars. And the back of it is carborundo and pencil. Um, if you saw the pictures, you would see where the, the images here relate to the photographs. Um, but if you didn't see that, it, well, it doesn't matter because we all look at books kind of freshly without it being told how to look at them or what the book is. We look at the book and we, we, it is what we feel it is, what we see it. So these were drawings. I think I've always gravitated to um, grays and darks and blues. Um, I'm not sure why. Maybe I should go back into analysis. But these are all drawings. I'm going to show you another book, and then I'm going to show you a final book, which you'll be surprised. Okay. In, um, I was very affected by, um, by our, when we went to Poland for the first time, I was very uh, moved and affected by the trip that we took to Auschwitz. It was very hard to explain the feeling and put it into words. And I didn't do anything about it for two years. And finally, um, I did make this book. It's an accordion book. And the these, it has to do with numbers. This way. Okay, turn it around. Turn around this way? Yeah. Okay, my director here. <laughs> A good director, too. Um, it's about the numbers that they tattooed on the, um, the people's arms. And I, and I was, I began counting. And some of these numbers The background of this, these little shapes here, these are blow ups of a picture I took of the gas capsules that they put inside the rooms where they had to shower. Uh, so I had made a print of this and I didn't like the print so I tore it up and I put together this book and what I did was just involve writing numbers. Numbers, numbers. So here I just began like writing one, two, three, four. And some of these were actual numbers that I found on the internet on people's arms. Same thing here, the A stands for Auschwitz. So this is a book that I'd like to exhibit on a wall. Okay, so now that I've all brought you down, I'm gonna bring you up. The last piece I'm gonna show you is um, a book that is about circles. Um, I have fascinations with some shapes and one of the shapes is a circle. So I started collecting 
um, papers and objects that have a circle. And this book is all about um, every page has a different circle on it. It's just a fun book. And I actually do a lot of different kinds of books. I don't always do very personal or serious books. Sometimes books are just done because you want to play. So every, you know, everything I saw <laughs> that was a circle or drew, I put into this book. It's fun. This is metal. I would find things on the street. Parking stubs. Um, they must have fallen off there. A little print. There's a circle right there, believe it or not. That's the tip of a pencil and eraser. I'm not quite sure what happened to these pages. I think I might have had something on them and it fell off. Because I really did try and put a circle on every page. And that's it. So I hope this uplifted you after I depressed you with all the other work. <laughs> okay? Magnificent. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Thank you, everybody. Excellent. Let's make sure she can see the flopping. Woo, yeah. Wow. Wow. I really like Fantastic, that. Fantastic, Rhoda. Great job, Rhoda. Oh, Rhoda. Stellar presentation. Yeah, yeah. So personal, so from her the depths of her inside. I feel like I know you, you're my sister now. <laughs> Thank you very much, because I don't have a sister except for my sister-in-laws. Wow. Thank I you. was really excited to see the roughness and the, a little bit of anger and angst and all that mixed in with all those luscious, beautiful textures and a lot of depth, a lot of thought. Um, we, we, we I have to see it longer. Um, I know it, that it seemed like that was a long time, but it, it takes you a longer time to see that kind of content really right. Um, really lovely, it. lovely. Yeah. You know, it's like when you show a book, if you just show it one page, I don't think it's a way of sharing mm -hmm. a book, especially for people like us. Yeah. You know, it's not like we're sending out to get into a show or something where they want two, you know, two JPEGs. But we're 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 three dimensional artists. Yeah. And without, um, you know, so that's why I thought this was a better way to do it um, than um, you know, or do a video, which yeah. I, I'm just too busy now to do it. So I dragged out some books. And thank you. I'm sorry I took too much time. No, 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 not at all. No, it was great. Yeah, that was fantastic. Yeah. 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 So I really like the one in Poland. One thing I would say, Christina, I mean, maybe I should, I don't think my work is about anger. I think some of it's about sadness. Well, I don't necessarily yeah. interpret anger and sadness differently. I think a lot of women um, express anger via crying and um, being more depressed in general. Um, they internalize it. So I think they're connected. 
Um, and it could be, you know, it's a Rorschach, you know, I mean, I'm in an angry place right now myself. So maybe that's why I'm seeing that. Um, I do feel that there's some, definitely some sadness going on there, but I love, I love it. And I'm, well, I'm, really, always, um, I'm always ready to be psychoanalyzed. So go ahead. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the way you talked yeah, about could, your process too, which was really great to hear. Whatever it is, it's truthful. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, just heart wrenching and uh, heart exciting and heart relating. And I want to come to your studio and I want to touch everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'd love to be nice. So I'm going to steal back um, being the host. Okay. Um, we did not really rehearse um, like what order you wanted your work in and some of these files are kind of small so I'm hoping people are going to be able to see them well enough. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and and you just tell me when you want to go to the next one. How's that sound? Is that going to work? You're talking to me? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, before we did I wanted to there are some pieces that I want to show first. And okay. I'm, I'm going to um, um, if you guys want to put me on speaker view, then um, since I'm speaking, you'll be able to see what I'm going to hold up because as you know, we haven't rehearsed this. So this is going to be kind of winging it. I'm, I don't have a son to do a, a camera view with. And anyway, there are some, and uh, Rhoda, your, your, um, presentation inspired me onto something and made me realize that I have a book that I didn't know I had. Anyway, I started loving books. I'm not really sure when, but um, as far as making them, it was in college in my uh, first, in my art school training, and I love calligraphy. And I made a book without um, any knowledge of how to make a book um, using my own marbled paper. And I was and still am sort of really um, connected to objectivist philosophy. And so I, I did these, this little book that has quotes on liberty and um, freedom and things like that. So it, it involves some, um, what I call uh, the illumination sort of things and my pages all look like this. I won't show you the whole book. It's starting to break up. So this was 1973 or four when I did this. Um, I loved these um, a, a book of hours. I was, when I got into art and started looking at art and calligraphy and that kind of thing, I fell in love with these um, book of hours that that monks made in um were, you know because all the books were hand done and I love that illustration sort of with the lettering and the the uh, gold metal leaf which I still love and if you know my work a lot I use a lot of metal leaf um anyway so I did this I did this little book in, in school and have loved books. And then I would, you know, over the years you, you make certain things, you marble paper, you make paper and you put it away. You don't know what to do with it. And somebody, now we're talking maybe 15 years ago um, with another artist friend she knew who made books. She said, how about we all get together and learn how to make books, you know, the binding and all. So I made, and I don't know, did I send you a picture of these, um, Christina? These little- yes, I have a picture of one of them, yes. Okay, yeah, the, probably the one with the, um, the book of, they're all empty books. They're little sketchbooks with empty pages. That's the one, yes. This is the one, and I just, I didn't know what to use for a cover. And I thought, well, I have this crappy little um, drawing of, of a lady on a beach. Why don't I just use it as a cover? 
And, you know, I learned how to do this kind of binding. I don't even know what it's called. It's called a Japanese puncture or stab bind. Yeah, and we drilled the holes and I drilled them. They didn't come out in a straight line. So I just, I painted some washers and put it in a line so that it would line up. And I liked the white, how the white came back and, you know, the little back. And I was just enthralled with just the making of blank books. Yeah. This was using my own marbled paper and just doing, I don't know if you can see this, this stupid little braid. I didn't need, I wasn't into beads at the time. Now I would have put a bead on the end um, or 10. And I had made some handmade paper and I made a little book with my own handmade paper. And so I went through this little spate of um, making these little sketchbooks that I just, I just covered them. And I can't even put anything on the inside because I'm afraid I'll ruin them. But Rhoda has inspired me um, that I could put anything in them. And my, my favorite thing about okay. a Japanese puncture bind is you can unsew and resew. So if you want to take a page out that you feel that you didn't do well on. It's actually not that difficult to reset the bind. Um, you can undo it and, and put it right back in. Or tear it out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you gotta get over that blank first page. You know, yes. you'll, be, you'll well, be golden, yeah. And it's so funny, I'm not, as a painter, I'm a painter. Yeah. And I'm not really intimidated by a, a blank first page or a blank, I mean, a blank canvas or blank piece of paper, I'll go right at that. But these are like, ah, I don't want to touch them. So they stay in my bookshelves, just like they are precious and, and perfect and untouched. Okay, so they're virgins. Um, so now a few years go by and I'm painting sheep like a maniac. And I had, I went to a show at Brick Bottom, um, not at Brick Bottom, sorry, the Brush Gallery up in Lowell. And some artist whose name I have no idea, but I need to find out because she launched me into sheet books. Like to me, it was an uh, one of those children's alphabet books. And if you want to show this one, I think, don't you have a picture of this one? At least it's on your website. I have, I have, um, I have your slides right here. Do you want me to, to yeah, do, bring, um, bring that up and you can, um, maybe people can see it better. Um, and this book with this little sheet. Okay. That was one that. Okay. So this is, is this, this one or this one? That one. Yeah. And unfortunately that's as big as they are. They're, they're, oh, okay. they're tiny. All right. So yeah, you they're tiny. Gray. I don't know if anybody can really see that well. Can they see that well? Yeah, you get a sense. They're little sheep monotypes. Because I was painting sheep and doing sheep monotypes. And then I saw this book and I thought, oh, and it was about this size. It's like five and a half by five and a half. Yeah, and that doesn't do any better. I'm that's sorry. all right. You get a sense of what's going on there. That's perfect. Um, I saw it full, it came into my head full, full, just fully. I knew exactly from, you know, the beginning to the end, knew what it would look like. And I did that one. And then of course, then I had the next one, which is counting more sheep. Yeah, and that's that, here. That's that one. And I wanted to experiment more with the binding, with the zigzag, with the little stick. Mm -hmm. because I do love craft and I love the little way these sheep turned into logos being a graphic designer um so this one came second counting the first one's called counting sheep and the next one's counting called counting more sheep and then the third one is keep counting sheep and it and it's a single monotype that I just you know did as one print and made the little accordion book so th those are my major books that i've done so far and with the monotype guild i was able to do what's called becca's book it's the top one and 
that's actually my latest book and it and it was also an accordion book that had pictures of each board member's artwork that was put into an accordion book it was a gift that's for the yeah. resigning president of the monotype guild and um, she had done so much for us and continues to because she's the president again um that that's i really like the whole craft and binding and um that kind of thing that intrigues me um so it's very a really great way to present art and it's a really great way to present art especially here with these are all different artists works yeah and it really works together um really nicely i think you did a good job with the way you sequenced it well, and that was a big um, part of it was sequencing it. And um, I had some help with that from another book. Um, I mean, another group, I had um, some people that I'm in a little art group called Collective Marks and they helped me sequence it. Um, so if you wanna unscreen share, I'm uh -huh. gonna show you one more thing, which is unbeknownst to me, a book that I made. It's about my mother and Rhoda got me thinking of that this is actually a book. It's a Ginny doll case and it's my first assemblage. Cool. I took an assemblage class, it's on my mother and it's called Happy Mom, Sad Mom. So Happy Mom is on this side and she was an athlete and she, was very beautiful. Look how pretty she is. Mm. Can you see how pretty she is? And um, she was athletic enough that she could do a handstand and smile and look at the camera and hold it. This was always my favorite picture of her. And she made all my clothes. So I have some fabric here. Everything is a little um, representation of my mother. She loved shells and had a collection. She taught me how, she was the one who inspired my collections. I have collections galore. So all these little things have, they represent my mother in some way. On the inside here is a picture of her father. Her father was a joyous, generous, wonderful man. His name was James Bach and he was Pennsylvania Dutch. And they had a wonderful relationship. And my therapist said that we now we transition to the sad mom side. And here's a picture of my dad, his passport picture, Sam Letvin. And my mom was never happy in her marriage. And my therapist said she thinks it's because she, she married a man that maybe wouldn't challenge the love she had for her father whatever. I don't know. Interesting theory. Who knows? They stayed together for 45 years. My dad traveled a lot um, and he would bring back teacups from his various travels. And that's um, what this little cup and saucer represent is my mom's collection of her teacups. But it's overturned because my dad really upset my mother's teacup and her life. And she became a martyr for, for my brother and me. And that's why I have the picture of her with this um, mulberry webbing, mulberry paper. I put it over her and put some um, me um, matte medium or like, what's that other uh, stuff that Mod Podge. And it, all the thin paper went away, but the webbing stayed and she was, she was very unhappy and tied up in this marriage. She also has a, like a, a thorn kind of um, headband there. And the grating here represents her, her the prison of the family. Um, my dad's writing is on the sides because it's around, he surrounded her. And my dad had beautiful handwriting, which is really interesting. And I didn't know that until I was an adult when I found letters in my dad's files from, that he wrote to his mother when he was traveling and he had absolutely gorgeous script handwriting. Anyway, I made, I made this assemblage, Happy Mom, Sad Mom about my mom. And um, 
And I just realized today that it's kind of a book. So now I have um, one book in mind. I, as a painter, that's what I, painter and a monotype artist is how my major expression, this um, book stuff is sort of secondary, <laughs> but I love it and want to do more. And so now I have an icon project that I'm making, which little like, portable icons are also books. And I'm going to use sheep uh, imagery with the uh, gold halo sort of thing, metal leaf, and hopefully some metal stamping and this and that. And it's, it's forming in my head. So it's why I joined Neba because I want to be inspired by all of you. And I think that's exactly what's happening now. <laughs> So thank you so much for letting me uh, do this. And this idea has come up just at the perfect time so I can meet all of you in time. And, um, and I'm really glad I could take part in this. Oh, it's wonderful to have you, uh, Carolyn. It really is. What, what a pleasure um, to get to know you and to get to know your beautiful work and uh, wonderful job organizing this whole thing. Very, oh, very exciting. I wouldn't say the whole thing, but before we go, before I go, I want to make sure that um, you all understand that I want you to email me and request to be part of the next month's show and tell. We have three artists. I have openings for three and in future months. And I want, uh, we're scheduling out to May right now before our summer break. And I want to meet each and every one of you and see your books. So please, please email me and tell me which month you want to be. You can see this is very casual. This is not something that needs a big think about. You can screen share. You can send Christine stuff and you can put it all on her. You can see that she'll just, it's very easy. And you just talk about yourself. I don't know about you, but I love talking about myself. So, um, and it's something to enjoy. And, and I think we'll all really appreciate your share. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. I enjoyed listening. That was great. Yeah. Um, I, I really, since this is a new, a new series, I really didn't realize that we were going to be doing as um, broad of a presentation. So I'm really just going to show the two things that I'm currently active on. Um, and I'm really hectic right now because I have my big open studio event going on. So um, things have been a little nutty in my world. So I'm going to go pretty low tech on uh, the share here. Um, I've been doing a lot of flag books over the years and um, I teach this as a class and I teach it in a little petite miniature three by four inch size. And so over the years, um, just to show you what a flag book looks like, um, it's built on the notion of the peaks and um, the mountains and the valleys of an accordion fold. And then you mount part of your ingredients on one side and part on the other. And it has an interplay um, like this. So it works out pretty well. Um, I did a lot of these with my students over the years. And so I make them in blanks with just little colorful tabs. And then I started modifying them and getting more conceptualized and actually thinking through like I'm a book artist and I need to start additioning and thinking about um, instead of buying other buying a store-bought piece of paper to be on the cover, um, maybe I can print my own covers. Instead of just having a simple piece, what if we start manipulating and cutting individually? Um, so it's evolved over the years. And I have, this one is called Field of Dreams. It's paste paper with like grasses. And then it's individually cut little grasses for the insides. Um, and I'm in the third edition. I make a dozen at a time. So I've made, uh, this is the, the third edition of this series. And I have previously just sold them in a um, clear bag with a really nice little tag on it and never really thought a whole lot about notions of colophons and additioning proper and better packaging and thinking 
about artists' books in a broader context. Um, I was trying to fulfill open studio events like Newton Open Studios and Jamaica Plain Open Studios and some of these places that I have affiliations with. And I just really felt like the little minis didn't really garner the kind of price tag that an artist book should. And I kind of was a little frustrated with them. So I started going bigger over time and I started conceptualizing them in different ways. I started adding a colophon and I started thinking about packaging. So over time, I've made it into something that I think works, works not only to sell the ideas that I'm conveying, but also works financially for me. Um, I've learned how to make them to a point where I can get a price point down. I mean, it's like trying to make anything that you really think you're going to try to sell and get your time value out of it. Um, you know, we don't get paid as a group, you know, and books are a hard sell. Um, and making the book price lower doesn't help it necessarily. So I decided as part of joining this group and being more serious as a book artist over the last like three or four years, I've been moving towards a very different idea, which is really do a complete package on a product um, that you're going to try to put forward to some of these special collection libraries. They're not going to go for the $40 little minis um, the same way, even though it's conceptually a really great book and the mass, mass a whole lot of people have loved it enough to buy it. Um, it's a very different animal. So I've really kind of stepped it up and I stepped it up in scale over the last couple of years by doing um, uniques that are much larger. Um, mm -hmm. um, does everybody know what a colophon is? I know that we have, um, some people have used that word, some people haven't. So I thought I'd go ahead and explain that. Um, Gabriella here, hanging out with me today. She suggested that that would probably be good to explain. Um, a colophon is usually either attached to the book or contained in the book's box or part of the box. It gives um, technical data on it. It might include your artist statement. It might include the edition information, um, your, you know, book ingredients, you know, any provenance on like found objects or things of that nature. Um, it gives a collector and these librarians at the special collections a little bit um, more precision and explanations. Um, people sometimes put font names um, and size, font sizes even. Um, so it's really up to you what you want to put in there. Um, when I first started out, I hand signed on the backs of like somewhere on the book. Um, at some point there was a hand signature and a date. And in some cases there wasn't even a title page. And so over time it's evolved. Um, so the, the process of how to addition and make things a little bit fancier has evolved too. But this is a large scale flag book um, that doesn't have the covers connected. So if you make a portfolio structure, which is, what did I just do? Oh, nothing, okay. Um, I hit something. Um, here is a fortune cookie one as well, but it's in a book cover that most people think of as a traditional book cover. It's referred to as a portfolio. Um, so if you don't connect and these guys can be free to expand, um, you get a much different interplay with your flag book. So this one doesn't have any connections. So this is a much larger scale and these are just crazy paste papers. There's all kinds of crazies. Okay, so the idea beyond just, oh, that's cool, um, really um, hit me hard at first because most people just look at it and say, wow, that's really the beautiful and stunning and that's a book and they get confused. And over time, I, I lost interest in them because of it being kind of like a one trick pony, you know? Um, and I thought, well, what, what, what's going on with that? And then the Attleboro Art Museum had the fifth anniversary of the Boston Marathon bombing as a show theme, and it was an invitational, and I was asked to make something for it. And that was when I think, this was, um, I don't know, maybe three or four years ago, Nancer was in that show as well. She's, she's here today. Hi, Nancer. Well, anyway, so the idea of this like big conceptual jump into what is a book, 
how do you read a book and what do these components actually mean and really taking a much bigger jump into just conceptual art as an artist occurred for me during that time period as well and the flags became runners and hurdles and races and spectators and all these different things um so the idea of the flag book um does have a lot more than the one trick pony thing to it and i really enjoyed exploring it and i am working now on um, there are eight of them i'm going to sell four individually and four as a set and it's called um, royal flush and royal flush um, is a whole bunch of playing cards that i've been collecting for a long time that i have basically shredded and separated into royal flushes which are um, 10 through the aces of one suit in poker. And um, it, it feels very politicized to me, um, which I thought was very you know, appropriate for the time of it. So my piece has a really nice box and here's the piece. And so each one has a single suit. Um, I created a paste paper with a, um, a patternation that kind of is reminiscent of playing card decks. You're looking at a very retro 1970s um, book cloth that I was given a large collection of antique book cloths by someone. This is like a weird plasticized material. I'm not even sure what it's made out of, but it's a really cool blue. And I did um, a recessed um, cotton bias going through here as a closure. And um, I took on the tips and I hit, um, Freight check, does everybody know this tip? Freight check is sold in the sewing department. Like if you go to Joann's or in Michael's in the sewing section, it's a little teeny bottle of clear stuff. It's called Frey, F-R-A-Y, check. Okay? And you put it along the edge of a piece of cut ribbon and it's sort of like a little bit like super glue of sorts and it goes clear and it hardens just enough to keep it from fraying. So when you're putting in your ribbons and ties and tassels and bits and stuff um, that they, you don't want them to un, get all weird on you, fray check. So you can't even see it on the tips here. You can't even see it. Okay, so basically um, it opens up, okay. Um, and it, it opens up across like that, okay? So I've got repeating text of the words and I've got place of these cards that are in different directions and different orientations and um, just a really great interplay of, of stuff going on there. My end piece is similar to the way the box is. So the title page is very similar to the front cover. And then the back has the has that. And then in the back cover, which is loose, actually loose, is the colophon. So there's the colophon in the back. And then I have a signature in the back as well. Okay. So they're gonna be four for each, one for each suit. And I've got two of them done. I have the spade and the diamonds all set. I've got everything, all the boards made, I've got um, I'm the kind of person that, um, I'll tell you what happened. I, I had a, a, a project that I got entered into in Cambridge that was called a CSA art project. This is in like, I don't know, eight years ago. Cambridge Center for Adult Ed, they picked nine artists and those nine artists made 50 of something. And they sold them like community supported agricultural shares. So you would get a share and then you would get a piece, you get so much art depending on how big a share you got. And so it was a really interesting project and it had a business component to it. It had business for artists classes that were mandatory for you to get the big $2,500 check. And most of those artists were like, I don't wanna to go to that. And I was like, you know, the guy probably is gonna give us some good advice. Let's, let's give it a go. You know, you have to like, you know, have the attendance sheet checked or they're not gonna give you your money. And the guy taught us about um, doing time cards on art projects, which is something you don't really think about. You don't really think about how long are you actually, I mean, Nancer probably does cause she's, she does the minutes and emails, every little thing, right? I mean, as a lawyer, you keep records, um, but I don't think artists do that. So when it comes time to decide, can I sell it? I mean, beyond the personal, 
you know, oh my God, I love this piece and it's part of my soul, you know, I can't give it up. Um, beyond that, you need to be able to make a living wage and understand if you're doing like a foolish project that's going to cost you hundreds of dollars to make and you can't make any money on it. I mean, that's that, that unless you have like a sugar daddy, <laughs> you know, I mean, come on, you know, um, not many of us can really do things like that. So I learned a long time ago that I needed to kind of give it a little bit better feel on how much and how long and productivity and not really setting aside time to do something. And maybe if we're going to do four or five or 10 of something, maybe it's better to do each stage. Everybody go, everybody through stage one, everybody through stage two, instead of making one and then another. Do you think Julie Chen with that crazy stuff that she makes, she's not doing one at a time. She's doing every stage through, you know, and makes a whole lot of them, you know. Productivity and having more fun. I mean, if you think a flag book looks tedious to make, and the big ones are, because that's an awful lot of, you know, gluing and, and handling a little teeny pieces. Um, if that's not going to be your thing and it's going to take you too long to do it, then you need to know up front, you know, that, that I don't have the time to make this, you know, worth my while. It's like a homemade quilt. I mean, there's a damn long amount of time put into a homemade quilt. I mean, how much people aren't even willing to sell them, you know, because of how long it takes. Um, so I think, um, for me, making these books has become, I really enjoy the, the process of the development of it, but then when it comes time to actually get down and dirty with actually the, you know, the head part is my favorite, but you got to really just push it through. And um, I have a lot of drive in my life anyway, so I mean, I, I'm okay to like slam through things, but I, I do react a lot like Rhoda does with the idea of old things getting mushed into something new and the layerings and the ideas of coming back to an old print and it becoming, uh, having a new, you know, maybe something you didn't even respond to 10 years ago. And all of a sudden it's, it's coming back and you're like, wow, this is resonating now. Um, so I'm a lot like that as well. And the flag books um, have been very popular for me, but they're also conceptually hitting the sweet spot for me too. And Royal Flush does it. Um, I was a government major at William & Mary. I've always been a very, um, my parents would say debative, uh, combative, uh, you know, ah, uh, uh, uh. it's just because I'm not a Republican in Georgia any longer is why it's ah, uh, ah, uh, ah uh with them. But um, yeah, so I mean, our paths have diverged so much that we can't have a conversation about anything hardly. But anyway, um, yeah, so I mean, I think that the, the fractured, um, with the eyes peeking over edges and the anger. It's like they're having, it's like a political battle. It really is. And the blues and the reds and the, the way the backs and the fronts of the little slivers play with each other. I mean, it just really seems like a lot of back, uh, you know, back boardroom dealings and, you know, shyster um, bullshit, upper class, and, you know, um, the 1%. You know, it just hits on a whole lot of notes for me, the idea of that. And um, yeah, yeah, it's, it, it just seemed like it made sense to me. I don't know how many more flags I have in me, but um, I think the cards are resonating with a lot of people visually. They, I think a lot of people really react to playing cards. So it's it's been an interesting project. Um, well, I think we've all played with playing cards. So yeah. just, it's part of it to see them being made into something, yeah. it relates to people I think who've never even related to art because now they see this thing that they've held in their yeah. hands and used turned into something else. Charming, just yeah. really charming. And the idea that they just sit there and say, this is a book, this, this is a book, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's for me, one of the things, instead of, I was gonna show you something else, but I, we're, we're already um, uh, an hour and 15. Well, let's just end with a general idea of the, I, what is this show and tell supposed to be? And for me, it's um, a clarification of the enormous breadth of ideas of what artist books are, how people read, this idea of quote reading, um, the way we 
take on this visual information and how we react to other people's books and how we learn from each other. And it's a, a very, we've got a whole lot of fun things to add to conversationally to all of this. Um, anybody else have any other thoughts? The answer? Yeah. I really like the combination of the three for, um, and especially the talking because it allows me to see how everyone thinks and how everyone approaches and how everyone sort of approaches expression. And, and that was really fascinating. I, I got ideas from everybody. I learned, I certainly didn't know about that fray check, but beyond that, when Christine, for example, when you were talking, I thought I, I got a different dimension of your um, flag books that the way that the flag is, it sort of reminded me of that, you know, know when to hold them, know when to fold them kind of thing too, of yeah. you know, when you open it up, when you, it, every page has a different perspective and the perspective depends on what its environment is. And all that seems to go along with, you know, what you were describing about your family kind of scenario of, you know, fighting, but it all depends on perspective and the whole is both fractured and extremely complex. And it, so it made me, you know, I, I've done flag books and I've known flag books and I've taught flag books, but it made me think about it a little bit differently. And that's what I love about this. Great, nice, yeah. Yeah, I think that it's a wonderful, uh, a wonderful time for us to get to know one another on, on a deeper level, particularly since we can't see each other in person with, uh, with the COVID situation. And, you know, it does give us a, a really good window into what each one of us is really cares about and how it is that we tackle our work. So I, I'm with you 100% on that, Nancy. I think that these sessions are gonna be really important for us moving forward. Um, and they're gonna give our group collectively a much greater cohesion and depth. So, and I, um, you know, and- and I, I, and I think each person can decide what they wanna show, what's on their mind. You can do a historical thing or you can do, you know, a, a zero in. And if you do it once, it doesn't mean you can't do it again, too. Yeah, so well, I agree. Yeah, it, I agree. It, it's really your your little 15 to 20 minutes, whatever you want to do. I think that this group will sit here and watch and absorb it and be thrilled, no matter what you do. You know, and the other thing too is, is that if you're working on a project and you're at the beginnings of it, you know, let's say at the maquette series, when you're just, you know, creating a general idea of what you want to do, you can revisit with the group, you know, at a later stage of the, of the project um, and maybe check in and, you know, say, this is what I thought, you know, do you all have any ideas? And then maybe check in again if it's a big project at the end. Yeah, you know, people, so are gonna, people are gonna have a variety they can do. Yeah. Yeah, that way we'll get a sense of, again, uh, uh, um, a greater depth of knowledge in terms of the actual working process. I always do that when I'm creating a piece, is I always document it photographically at each major stage. And that's what I would have my students do at the college. I would always have them photograph their, you know, any projects, major projects like that. I think that's really helpful. Yeah, I'm making a post um, for the uh, NEBA website on the stages of production. I have a whole lot of photo photography of, um, it, you know, on the front homepage where you have the three little sections, the new release, I'm putting myself um, and Royal Flesh in there probably in the next week. So we'll, you'll be able to see if you wanted to check that out, you can, that, that's right there. Happy to, you know, I keep begging people to send me content. Please send me, I want to soak it all up and put it on our website. Whatever you guys feel like you want to make a post about anything. I mean, hell, we have a whole blog post on us getting our bank account. So we're desperate, people. Come on. So Carolyn, can you do a, a blog post about, about the show and tell today? We will, yeah. We can do that. Yeah. I, I guess if someone tells me how to do it. No, I'll do it. I, I'm, the, I'm the web manager. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't let anyone else have access because I don't want it to get our, our code to get messed up and it not to work. Cool, well. you can do it. So I will post, but you can email me with all the good stuff and I have recorded this. So um, our post will have maybe some more pictures and a link to the, to the video. And when you when you uh, link the video, are all the, uh, all of the, um, 
attendance going to be on view or can you mute that so that we only focus on the main screen? To be honest, this is the first time I've recorded off of this. Um, so I'm curious to see for myself. Because it would be nice if we could have one when, when we have the speaker speaking, if we could just have that to zero in on rather than the gallery view of people around them. And yeah, then afterwards. I mean, considering that we don't know um, what we're getting, um, I think whatever we got is what we got. And we can, um, I'm excited to learn how to do better presentations myself. And I'm starting to teach um, virtually some as well, hopefully in January. So um, I need to, to up my game. Rhoda's game was good. Uh, she did really nice with her. Her visuals look good. And I'm sure in the recordings, um, they'll be much prettier than the way oh, yeah. we did ours, because you can't see it as well. Um, but we can always get better as we go. Um, we are little baby steps, but I think we're, we're making baby leaps. But we don't, we just have to be careful. I'm going to be talking like a Luddite. Um, be careful about getting, making it, having to be too technical. I for agree. Future reference. I per personally like the spontaneity of just, you know, here's, uh, did this, did, can you see this? I mean, I, I want to be able to throw in an insight that, you know, the, the insight that this was a book came to me during Rhoda's piece. And I wanted, I don't want to, I, we've got to be able to be really spontaneous too and not scare people yeah. away. I think it'll work itself out. How I, the Jaffe Center in Florida can do it this way every week with their home edition the guy just holds up stuff right up to the thing i mean they don't do anything fancy and it's great and they have a huge following so i think we'll work out um i think um it's been lovely are we uh, yeah. anybody have any more questions just want to remind people to get back to me my email carolyn at carolynleffin.com to be in next month and the month after and the month after so we can do this on the second Thursday of the month and you know in time we might want to change that so that I think it, we probably will at some point but let's stick with what we have for the moment yeah, yeah. um and so who if you can't make it month after month after month it, it might be a good thing to let us know that this time slot just it can't ever work for you so that's all but I look forward to hearing from you and I'll get you into the slot and we'll see you next Thank you so much. I this is it. really what I'd, I'd hoped uh, the book group would be like, and I'm really yeah. getting a lot out of it. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Good to see you, Stephanie. Yeah, I can't always. Thanks, come, Christina. Thanks for the organizing. Thanks. Yeah. It's wonderful. All right. All right. Great job. Great, Great job. job. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.